Boiler rooms, penny stocks, Ponzi schemes. Each year, investors lose between 10 and $15 billion in these types of fraudulent investment schemes, often wiping out a lifetime of savings. How can you spot these kinds of abuses early, avoid them altogether? Our next guest is securities litigation attorney John Lawrence Allen. He represents uh, investors in some of the most high-profile types of security scams. He joins us today from New York City to talk about this. And you were telling us that th there's been a jump uh, in the last six months of these types of cases. Any reason why you think of? Well, uh, you might take a look at the stock market decline, but I think a lot of people who were complacent and not looking at their statements, not taking, uh, being abreast of the market, uh, came to look in the first quarter at their statements only to find out that they have suffered devastating losses, many times possibly because they were aware of the risks they were taking, but in some instances people weren't aware of the risks they were taking or were not aware that uh, brokers might have put them in unsuitable investment products. Which is fraudulent? Good question. Uh, I think that investors bear responsibility to, to check up on their statements, to take a look at the recommendations made to them. However, if uh, you as a neophyte investor walk into a brokerage company, let's say you're age 55, your children have already been educated, you're starting to plan for your retirement, you say, you know, I don't want to take a lot of risk. I'm willing to d do better than a CD. I've seen a great market rally. Uh, I'd like to participate, but I'm not really a, a risk-oriented investor. And a broker recommends dot-com stocks, internet stocks, computer stocks after a seven-year meteoric rise. That broker was probably committed an unsuitable recommendation, and he and the brokerage company could be responsible for that improper recommendation. So, I mean, we're just showing here the types of fraud that, uh, and there were three types that you were itemizing for us, but what essentially can an investor do to avoid these kinds of fraudulent conditions? Well, I think the, the key element that runs through all fraud is trust. Uh, investors want to trust brokers as they would a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant. However, you have a responsibility to, first of all, don't take your monthly statements and throw them in the trash can or stick them in a filing cabinet. There's a lot of information contained in those statements. If you look at your monthly statements, you understand them and read them, you can uncover unauthorized trading. As an example, you go away on a vacation. You come back and you find out there have been thousands of shares bought and sold in your, in your portfolio. You open up your statements from the previous months only to find out there have been tens of thousands of dollars of transactions. Had you been a responsible investor and looked at your monthly statements, you could have detected this kind of fraud yeah. before it occurred.